Eyes. Black eyes that carve hollow secrets into your skull. Empty experiences that gray not only your hair, but fill in the wrinkles of your skin, thought Yoma. Yoma had traveled nowhere exotic. He had spent the majority of his 65 years exploring nothing but the inner workings of his own banal life. I will see the world. I am a million pieces of rock spread across every pixel of blue sky. Yoma often spoke in this manner weaving Kerouac like phrases that could leave a person frustrated with wonder. As a young boy, a brick wall could suddenly become the peak of Everest, his mutt of a dog a faithful donkey, and the air that floated amidst his left ear his knowledgeable sephir. As time went on for Yoma, the brick wall froze into, well, a brick wall. The day Yoma stopped seeing flowers and the stars is the day Yoma meant it when he said, I will see the world. Yoma was found one morning, adorned in army fatigues, clutching a regulation forest green all-purpose bag to his chest. He got these treasures from the war, and that was his response when people asked, which war? The war, Yoma would reply in exasperation. Many would suspect, and they would be right, that Yoma was never in a war, not one with guns and bombs anyway. To Yoma, it was quite clear his war began the day he was born, and he was still fighting. I am leaving, Yoma turned to his wife halfway out the door, prepped for battle. Yoma's wife was a frail little thing who unbelievably birthed five children out of her tiny frame. She was gray in every essence of the word. Her compressed face only looked at her husband and nodded. She no longer yearned to see a connection in his eyes. They were too blackened for her. A single light calls to me like the burning bush. A message tells me to seek something beyond our menial existence. He continued as he marched fervently out the door and down the street until his poetic rantings became undistinguishable bubbles of sounds and air. Without thought, Yoma's feet brought him straight to town. He looked around in the middle of the square, surrounded by the people he had known his entire life, and shouted, I am leaving! I am going to see the world! Please, friends, learn from me and prove to yourselves the roundness of it all! No one acknowledged Yoma. He had made this proclamation once a week for the last ten years. Every Saturday morning it was the same march, the same proclamation, and every Saturday afternoon Yoma with a few drinks in him stumbled home, convinced he had traveled to Bucharest in a hot air balloon. On this Saturday, an ordinary looking man walked to the center of the square and simply said to Yoma, Me too. With that his young daughter ran into his arms giggling. He lifted his daughter triumphantly into the air, smiled at her and repeated to Yoma, Me too. Hours later, the brick wall pressed a cool, familiar hand on Yoma's back as he slid down its stable frame and found himself crouched into a sea on the wet floor. It was dusk now, and Yoma got up, looked to the stars, and smiled. I see, he repeated. I see. says that you can't be in the house anymore. He says that if you're alone, even for five minutes, who knows what could happen. That's right, and we just we just want you to be safe. We're just trying to do what's best. We're just trying to do what's best for you.